Pray for her. She is an award-winning actress, writer, and director. Please welcome Kara Gillen. Hello. Whoa, there's so many of you. Hi, hi. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello. Hi. Oh, wow. <gasps> Whoa. Welcome to Raleigh. Thanks, it's beautiful here. Isn't it? I have been here before, but I guess I didn't notice how beautiful it is. I was driving around and like all the houses and architecture. I love it here. Oh, it's, it's absolutely very nice, very nice. Great to see you in person again. Uh, we've done this before and then uh, for a while we were doing it on the computer. If anyone's yes. seen the GalaxyCon lives, they're on YouTube. Several of this young lady right here, and absolutely <laughs> wonderful. It's nice to be in person. Yeah, I know, <laughs> gotta see you again. So, um, Whenever I have a solo guest like yourself, I uh, always open up with this. What drew you to <gasps> Oh, we're going in. Yeah. We're getting deep immediately. Um, oh, gosh. There's so many things. I think... I remember being a really young kid in the top of Scotland, that's where I'm from, Inverness, known for the Loch Ness Monster. I'm really setting the scene. <laughs> Not very many actors from that part of the world, so I didn't really like have like an example from my area that had done it, but I was just like really interested in all things performance related. Like if it was a dance or a song or a piece of acting, I was just like so drawn to it, and I don't know why, just a natural thing. Um, and then I think like there was also this element of acting of like being able to escape myself for a little while, which feels quite nice, I guess. It's similar, like you guys are putting on costumes for the weekend and you kind of feel like you can be a little bit different. And so for me, it's sort of the same feeling and I really like that feeling. So I decided to pursue a career in that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Along the way, um, you have become, in my opinion, a very good director, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you expand that part of your career. Um, what, what got you onto that? Was that sort of a parallel thing all along, or did that something that evolved when uh, a little bit behind the acting stuff? So when did you suddenly think, you know what, I think I'd like to do this? Well, I think like talking of seeing examples um, in the industry, I hadn't really seen that many female directors. Um, I never really like it never registered with me, but I always imagined it to be like an American man for some reason. <laughs> like, oh, that's what directors are, like a Hollywood director. Um, with the little so, beret and yeah, <laughs> and the yeah, or, or like a ba or a baseball cap is what I'm imagining, oh, yeah. uh, like riding around on a golf cart. Mm. Um, <laughs> and so I never really thought of it as a possibility, actually. Um, but now when I look back in hindsight, I used to make all of these films um, when I was like a 13-year-old kid in my bedroom. I got a video camera from my parents and it was my prized possession, and I would make horror films. And my friends would have to be like the camera operator, and I would also be in them, but I would be directing, and they're god-awful, but <laughs> I loved it. And I think now that I look back, I'm like, oh, it makes so much sense that I went into directing, because I think I've been doing that for a really long time. Um, uh, so, so then I just decided to, again, do that professionally at one point. <laughs> Your short films are wonderful. Oh, thank uh, you. I really enjoy them. I, uh, I really, uh, I think, but as, as we, <laughs> And I am phrasing this in her capacity as the director uh, of Hoarders. Uh, I, re oh, yeah. I really like that one, uh, uh, casting uh, Jamie. Oh, I guess we can talk about it from a director perspective. Point of view. Yes. Aha! Yes, yes. Uh, and I, 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 really, I really enjoyed uh, uh, casting of Jamie because I think she's a wonderfully undervalued oh, Jamie's actress. Jamie's brilliant. I saw her in a play in New York, actually. I went to see her specifically because I wanted to like check her out and see, um, see her acting. And I was like, ah, oh, I'm obsessed. I have to put you in this short film. These films, by the way, are on her YouTube channel, and if you don't subscribe, click that like bell and subscribe. <laughs> oh, thank you for the plug on my YouTube. Uh, yeah, There's well, a day in the life of playing, uh, no, a week in the life of playing Nebula on my YouTube channel now, which I edited myself, and I love so much. <laughs> I love that video. <laughs> um, what's a perfect day for you? Oh, a perfect day? Yeah, what's a perfect day? Okay, uh, I wake up, oh, I mean, is this, okay, we're talking in a dream world? I wake up at 8.30, 8.30, but I don't, I sometimes wake up at 
10 30 <laughs> is the is the reality which is really bad which is um when the dog walker rings my doorbell um and then i scramble out of bed and then hand over my dog um but in in this dream scenario i wake up at 8 30 i'm sprightly i'm feeling good well rested uh drinking a coffee uh, take care of my dog, probably d write a play. Yeah, that's what I would, I would like to be doing right now. Uh, writing a play, because I kind of want to do a play. Um, I'm feeling that urge to like get on stage, and I think I was like too nervous to do it for a while, but it's time to face the fear, because we have to face our fears in life, unfortunately. <laughs> Are you leaning towards a genre in the play thing, or are you still waiting for that North Star to appear and following it? I was like thinking about it, and I was like, I definitely want to get on stage, put on a play somewhere. It would be nice to have created it myself in some capacity. And then I thought, what about like something in the horror space? But in play form, that could be really fun. Spooky, scary. Could have some fun jump scares in there. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, do, do you have any uh, uh, fun, almost guilty uh, pleasures that uh, you're willing to share? Reality TV. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, I love reality TV. Like Love Island UK, Vanderpump Rules. Yeah. Oh, that scandal! Oh my God! <laughs> I love reality TV. I think it's so fascinating, and like I know, I, like I feel like I'm studying human behavior, even though my husband is always like, "No, you're not. They know the cameras are there. Like this is not real." I'm like, "Yes, it is. Stop ruining it." <laughs> <laughs> Um, during the week, we had some people like uh, send in uh, some questions. So I just want to give a, a few Great. of them for you, and then I'll jump into our audience. Okay. So, um, Kaden Campbell wants to know if uh, you had a chance to work with any actor, alive or dead, <gasps> who would it be and why? Oh, alive or dead? Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with Daniel Day-Lewis, who is alive. Yes. So come on, Daniel, if you're out there <laughs> in costume. <laughs> That'd be great. What's, uh, yeah, okay. That, that, I like how much he transforms. Yes. That's what I like about acting, the slight sort of almost like magic trick of like, I can't believe that's the same person. That's what is attractive to me. Absolutely. No, that was not me too. Uh, Sean would, uh, uh, wants to know, I've never been to Scotland before. What are some of the things that you would recommend doing on a first time trip to your homeland? Um, I recommend going to Loch Ness, seeing if you can see the Loch Ness monster, because it's real. Um, <laughs> and also just sample all the whiskey possible. Whoa, some whiskey fans in the house, okay. <laughs> uh, Peter Sloop wants to know, um, oh, who's your favorite musical artist? Favorite musical artist? Or maybe one of your favorites. Sometimes, oh, yeah, sometimes it's, hard it's hard to, to go choose favorite, a so, definitive. Yeah. I really like the band Muse. Oh, they're so good. Yeah, so consistently good after all these years. Bit of Frank Sinatra, bit of Elvis, bit of Britney Spears. Oh. Yeah, I've chosen so many. That, that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. And finally, Sophia wanted, was sent in, wanted to know who have been some of the biggest influences in your life? Biggest influences in my life? My parents? I feel like they, they were really good and supportive and didn't sort of once go, you want to do what for a living? <laughs> um, they were like, yeah, you can do that. Um, so I'm really grateful that they didn't have any doubts because it meant that I didn't have any doubts that it was possible. Um, and also Jennifer Aniston for her performance in Friends. <laughs> I love her so much. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Absolutely. Okay, before I jump in the audience, uh, on behalf of everybody here, because there's certain things we can't talk about, I will just frame it like this. I, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for your talents. I want to thank you for your performances. And I want to thank you for just all the energy and the professionalism that you've brought to every role that you've done. It has been an absolute delight. That's so nice. Thanks. And... On behalf of all the fans of that show, and the fans of that movie, and that other movie, and that other movie, thank you. Oh, thank you. That's so nice. <laughs>
<laughs> and now it'll be my pleasure to take some questions. All uh, right, you all know the rules. Let me set up my phone here. All right. Ooh, we've got a line of questions. This is going to be good. I see a Ruby Roundhouse. I see an 11th Doctor. All right, Boz, what's your name? Nick. What do you want to know? Have you ever, uh, were you ever required to know the source material of your uh, movies? I, you don't have to talk about them, but just like, did you have to research roles like Jumanji or uh, Guardians? Let's just say, have you ever researched any role in any medium that you've taken? <laughs> Trying to get around this is so funny. Um, <laughs> have I ever researched? Uh, yes. Uh, for the one about the board game, <laughs> I uh, did not have to do much research because it was one of my favorite films of all time in my top three. Uh, yeah, so it was mind-blowing to me to end up in that game <laughs> because I used to watch that film on loop when I was a kid. I like 2001 A Space Odyssey, The Shining, and, and that film. <laughs> That's a heck of a cinematic uh, oh, pedigree. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Great question. Thank you. Hey, what's your name? My name is Chase. Um, Hi. Ma'am. Um, so I'm more of a bourbon drinker myself, okay. um, but um, I would love to hear a recommendation for a scotch from a scot, preferably not too peaty. I don't like Lafrague too heavy. Oh, me neither. I don't like a peaty whiskey. Oh. Um, I'm going to go Tomatin, 18-year-old. And that's um, a distillery that's really near where I grew up, and I used to go there on like school trips and stuff, which in hindsight, <laughs> <laughs> definitely not where you bring kids, but that's where we went. <laughs> All right, now what's a bourbon you would recommend to us? Uh, Woodford Reserve. Oh, yeah, I have that one. Yeah, nice. There you go. <laughs> Great one. Thank you. Great cosplay, by the way, of that guy from that show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's your name? Terry. Terry Hi. Like um, so uh, the show that's, getting re uh, that's celebrating its 60th this year, um, <laughs> which of the original seven people that portrayed that character that he's cosplaying... Um, <laughs> Would you have liked to have had a chance to be the companion of? So there were many uh, performers <laughs> that played a role, yep. and so what would you like to have worked with them on the stage? Um, on the stage? On the yes. stage. Yes. On a oh, stage. specifically in a play. Well, in a play, in a performance. Uh, not on television and not on oh, film. Oh, I see what you're saying. OK, on stage. <laughs> And I can't choose the one that I was on the stage with. Um, so I'm going to go Tenant. Yeah. Yeah, I've got to go with my fellow Scott. And I already worked with my other fellow Scott in the fires of Pompeii. So, Tenant. <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Vivian. By the way, Vivian, you look very lovely. Looking good. As that character from that thing. <laughs> what's your question? Um, as an aspiring director, actor, do you have any advice or tips? Um, oh, that's so cool that you're pursuing that. I think in this day and age, what's really great is that we are able to have, like, we're able to broadcast things that we make. Like before social media and the internet like really blew up, there was like nowhere to put your stuff after you made it. But now you have a platform. So I would say just be self-generating and in any way that you can, like film things, make things constantly. Like for me, I know the first thing that I made is unwatchable, but don't be put off by that. Like just keep going and you will get better. I mean, you're probably good already. I'm just saying like don't be discouraged and put your stuff out there when you're ready to put it out there, but like just know that you have a platform to get it out there when, when you want to. Thanks. Great question. There you go. Hey, what's your name? My name's Kaiden, and I had a pretty simple question. Uh, which one do you prefer, McDonald's or Chick-fil-A? <laughs> oh, definitely McDonald's. Like, by a clear mile. Come on. 
uh, Chick-fil-A scares me. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> we don't have that uh, in the UK. That's probably why. <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Corey. Corey, what do you want to know? Um, so this is, a, I just want to say, um, please pursue directing. Please pursue your play. I went to see Much Ado About Nothing with David Tennant and Catherine Tate. Yeah. Who? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I'm kidding. But <laughs> I will. I will fly to London to see whatever you put on. Oh, that's so cool! Thank you. <laughs> but okay. Um, my question is: We watched the your AD episode right beforehand. Oh, yeah. Oh, here. Yes. Oh, that's what you were. Okay. And yeah. I am obsessed with it. Your house is beautiful. <laughs> um, but. It's very blurred, so we can't tell which bum is your husband's, but could you tell us which bum <laughs> is your husband's? You want me to tell you which bum? Yeah, there's a picture in the... It's the, in the third bum from the right. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be like, what were you talking about today? <laughs> That's the quote of the weekend, folks. The third bum from the right. <laughs> hey, what's your name? Uh, Adam. Hello, ma'am. How are you Hi. doing? Good, thanks. Awesome. Uh, so, have you ever experienced anything supernatural? <gasps> oh, ooh, have I ever experienced anything supernatural? Okay, my mom is somewhere in the audience, and she always sees ghosts everywhere. Like, she's got, like, a, another sense. She can, like, really... But have I? I'm pretty skeptical, even though I like horror films. I think, I'm, I'm trying to think. I probably at one point thought I felt a ghost in the room one time and I turned around to my friend and I was like, do you feel, and she went, a presence? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And we thought it was the Kurt Cobain, which I don't think it was. <laughs> I think that we were teenagers and obsessed with him for a while. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Sir, Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Hi, what's your name? My name's Allie. Hi, Allie. Hi. Um, I'm just curious if you have a preference to acting versus directing. I know you've done a lot of roles and a lot of directing, and I would just want to know if you had a preference on the two. Oh, I think that my first love is always going to be acting. Like, I just love performing, disappearing into a character. There's something, like, I could be happy doing that for the rest of my life. Directing is something I really, really love, too, but it doesn't feel like the first of the loves. Um, so I'm going to say acting, but there's something so lovely about being able to like have the kernel of an idea and then assemble an amazing team around you and then bring this vision to life and it's your vision rather than serving somebody else's vision, which can be really fun too, but like there's something about it being your vision that's really appealing about directing and so um, I'm definitely going to do more of that. Great. Thank you. Great question. Yeah. No problem, no problem. Uh, what's your name? Uh, I'm Robbie. Hi, Robbie. What would you like to know? Um, okay, I'm really sorry if this is rude or against the rules. Uh, <laughs> tell, oh, me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to know, uh, Ali, will you marry me? <gasps> <laughs> we can't top that. Sit so on, everybody. Yeah. Wow. She was not expecting that. Her face was shocked. <laughs> wow. Wow. That was beautiful. Oh, wow. Sorry. All right. Uh, what's your name? RJ. Oh, yeah. You have a regular question? <laughs> I've never read that question, but yeah. <laughs> Matt Smith or Arthur Darvo? Um, oh, I can't choose. You may plead the fifth on that. I am going to go with M Matt Darville. Yeah. That's why I'm choosing. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Uh, my name's Raven. 
Um, you mentioned Nessie. I'm, I'm Scottish from near Inverness. Oh, uh, cool. But uh, you're now the voice of the, ja one of the voices of the Jacobite cruises. Yeah. So, <laughs> were you, was your clan Jacobites or loyalists? Oh God, I don't actually know. know. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> we were on Bonnie Prince Charlie's rosters. <laughs> oh gosh, I actually need to look into that. My mum's side is Patterson, which I believe was part of Campbell's. Mm -hmm. So I don't know beyond that. Yeah, we were McGuinnesses. McGuinnesses. That sounds like Irish, but it's Scottish because it's well, Mc. <laughs> well, there there are but some that were in uh, Ireland. Ah, as well. interesting. And we also were kind of split. We were tenants of the Bruce. Ah, interesting. So. Um, yes, I also, um, to explain to everyone, um, recorded a voiceover for this cruise that goes down Loch Ness, um, teaching everyone about all the history of it, um, which is a random little job that I did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Hey, what's your name? Hello, my name is Willa. Hello. What do you know? Um, if you went to Hogwarts, what would your house be? What house would you think you would be in? Oh. oh. I must confess that I have only maybe seen one of those films. <gasps> I feel like I felt the whole audience just turn on me. <laughs> Guys, I've lost them. <laughs> but what what am I? <laughs> what house am I? Like, we don't like Slytherin, right? All right, tell you, tell you what, hold on, 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 hold on. Let's ask her, if she, do, what house do you think she would be in? I think she would be a Gryffindor. Gryffindor, okay. All right, I think I think we agree. What what house would you be? I'm a Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff. Okay, now I want to. I'm a Muggle, and I'm proud of it. <laughs> I do know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much. Great Thank question. You. Now Thank I've you. learned my house. I'm a Gryffindor. So next time somebody asks me that, I'm going to say Gryffindor with confidence. <laughs> And what's your name? Oh, uh, my name is Ricky, Hello, Ricky. And a certain show that you were on, you met an artist. And every time we watch oh, it, yes. I cry at the end. And I bought her a teddy bear that has Starry Night on it. We named him Vincent. And we watch it all the time. My question is, who is your favorite artist? Oh, um, I like the artist who, OK. I. <laughs> The reason I'm hesitating on saying the name is because I'm not totally sure how it's pronounced. I feel like in America you say Munch or M Monk. I say Monk, but it's Edward Munch, like the Scream. Yes. Yeah. Like yeah. So he did this painting called The Scream, which is kind of what the Scream mask is based on in the movie Scream. This big long face, I think. I assume so. Correct. Um, so for that reason, he is my favorite artist. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Who is yours? Uh, Vincent Van Gogh. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and yours too. All right. Thank. Great questions. Give a round of applause for that. We we clarified the uh, clarified the Harry Potter issue, and of course, I'm talking about <laughs> Harry Potter the books. <laughs> oh, I did read the first book, actually. What am I talking about? Or had it read to me by a teacher. <laughs> there you go. Which was great. Hey, what's your name? Uh, Josie. I would like to ask, because I've seen almost everybody talk about this, yet you haven't. What's your opinion on Shakespeare? I've seen people do so much with Shakespeare talking. Oh, Shakespeare. I think that he was good. <laughs> um, <laughs> pretty talented. <laughs> um, no, Shakespeare's incredible. Those stories are so timeless, and it's incredible how how popular they still are after all this time, and it just shows that there's such universal stories that even through the sort of, you know, older style language, you can really still connect with them um, very much. Um, and I've seen some really brilliant versions of Shakespeare and some less brilliant versions. <laughs> it would be cool to do that one day. I'm not sure which one. Maybe the Scottish play. <laughs> There you go. I'm not gonna say Do you have a favorite Shakespeare? Um, I like the play you cannot say, but I like to call it McDonald's. McDonald's. Okay. Fair. <laughs> Fair, absolutely. That's what we'll call it. Hey, what's your name? Uh, my name is Lars. Um, as Hi. you can see, I like dressing in costume here, and I was wondering, uh, within the bounds of what you can talk about, do you have any interesting stories, either fun or excruciating, of wearing particular costumes? Do I have any costume stories? Yes, yes here. 
Oh, uh, I'm trying to think. I mean, God, I've worn so many costumes in my time. I'm trying to think of any. It's like sort of normal to me to wear a costume at this point. It'd be weirder to not wear a costume because I put them on every day. Um, the nebula. Oh. <laughs> the blue faced outfit. <laughs> Was pretty intense, huh? In the sky. In the sky? The one in the sky? Oh, oh, in like space. Oh, the, and the one in the galaxy. Yeah. The one, the costume yeah. I wore to the galaxy um, <laughs> was a particularly intense one to wear. It was like full facial coverage. It was like a second skin that was glued to me and it would take like four hours in the morning to be ready to be on camera by eight o'clock in the morning. So you can imagine what time I'm getting up. Um, and then I felt like uh, Palm Clementief, who plays a bug character, would um, share a trailer with me and she would roll in like two hours after me and like would get pampered. She had like a diffuser blowing like nice air out that smelled good and they were putting rose water on her face and I felt like I was being operated on. <laughs> and I was like, this isn't fair. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's my story. <laughs> there you go, there you go. <clears throat> and of course, your observations about that character are from uh, you as the editor of the YouTube video uh, that you have on there. <laughs> yes, exactly. As, the ed your pre as your perspective as, as the editor of, of that a video. Behind the scenes. Yes. <laughs> Yes, that's what it is. Hey, what's your name? Chris. Wait, show what you got. Uh, did you have any dance or gymnastics experience growing up? And ha did you have the opportunity to influence any choreography? Or um, did you, you have, did, hmm. On a, a jungle movie worse. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, no, we won't go there. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I, I, yes. I feel like I know yeah. what you're talking Listen, about. Wait, right. did, did you ever do any dancing or choreography? We'll go there. Um, okay, yes, I did do dancing growing up. Was I good at it? Absolutely not. It was terrible. Like, I was always at the back of the class because I'm really tall and gangly, couldn't control my limbs, can only kick like this high, and then the girls are like, woo! Um, and so. I tried, I really, really tried, but was just not naturally good at that. I'm much better with verbal gymnastics than actual gymnastics. Um, so give me a monologue any day over any kind of like coordinated sequence. <laughs> there you go, thank you. All right. Hey, what's your name? My name is Michael, sir. What do you want to know? Well, Karen, uh, I've been a fan of yours since 2017, your second trip to the galaxy. Before I saw you in doing all that, I thought space was very boring. So basically, here's the thing. If you were to go to any planet in the galaxy, what would your ideal planet look like? Oh, that's fun. Um, my ideal planet? Oh, um, I think that it would be fun to float around on it. <laughs> I feel like I'm meant to have a profound deep answer here, and I want to like float. <laughs> and we like, you know, have a better world and <laughs> world peace. <laughs> um, what else? It would be fun if people had two heads. I, I would quite enjoy having two heads. <laughs> there you go. All right. Because two is better than one. Come on up. Hey, what's your name? Samantha. Samantha, what would you like to know? So as a like rising actress, I want to know, what's your like go-to, if you're in the mirror practicing, what's your go-to acting exercise? Oh, I actually don't think I... Oh, wait, sometimes I practice in front of the mirror, but the reason I'm doing that is to memorize the lines. Um, so like... I actually think what would be a more effective way to practice is to, I'm assuming you're, you're going into screen acting as well, um, film yourself, um, which is something I've started doing recently because I've had a few breaks and I think when you take a break you can start to forget that the camera picks everything that you're thinking up um, and you kind of need to trust that. And when you forget that, I mean, for me anyway, I can start to really try to convey emotions and push it too hard and forget that the camera can actually almost like see into my mind. And actually, if you just let that happen and not try to convey anything, but just genuinely feel it, the camera will pick it up and the audience will 
it might be slightly ambiguous, and, and then the audience can kind of be like, oh, I think she's thinking this at this point, and it's sort of up for interpretation, which is kind of more interesting sometimes. Um, I'm really rambling. I think, <laughs> I think filming yourself is really good, because then you can see the level at which you are trying to push emotions across, and then ideally try to dial that back um, and just trust that the camera's going to pick it up. If that makes sense. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, what's your name? I'm Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. So what is the hardest part of preparing for a role for you? Um, On stage. On stage. <laughs> On the world stage. Uh, the hardest part, I think what I always do is I <clears throat> work with various acting coaches, and often I will not do the type of acting that I actually practice with them. I kind of like go off and do my own thing after the sessions. But what it's good for is it forces me to break down the script and read it and be a detective and look for all the clues and figure out who this person is. And then I take all of that information and then kind of be like, oh, I'm going to go my own way on this. But it's good for that because it holds me accountable. So that's kind of the harder part of the preparation. And then obviously making sure I know the lines inside out so that when I get there on the day, it doesn't feel like work. I'm just kind of playing around all day because I did all the hard work the night before almost. I know the lines inside out. And then also, Every time I'm about to do a role, I have this period of such anxiety where I'm like, I can't do this. Like, I'm, I don't know how to do this. I'm going to be too nervous and I'm not going to be able to do it. And then it always works out all right, but there's like this feeling of like, I genuinely, this is the one that I'm not going to be able to do. And I'm like, when are you going to realize that <laughs> you might be able to do this? Uh, I'm hoping for that day to come. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. All right, our final question, what was your name? Jordan. Hey, what was your name? Um, so I'm a primary school teacher here in Raleigh. So who was, yeah. who was your favorite teacher growing up? Oh, my favorite teacher growing up? Oh, there, I had an English teacher called Mrs. Newlands, I think, who was so supportive of me going into acting. And I was like a really quiet high school kid and quite shy. And so the fact that she was pushing me into that was so nice because nobody would have looked at me and thought, oh, you should be an actor. Um, I wasn't very performative when I was just like talking to people and stuff. And she even like spoke to the local acting teacher to like get me into the class. And then I didn't get into the class. <laughs> So I wasn't allowed, I was banished from studying acting in high school, which is hilarious. But I do appreciate my teacher really trying to get me in there. And I think if you want something enough, you'll find a way in despite how many people are. are and, and I don't mean this in a bad way of like, they wouldn't let me in the class. It was more like there were people who were way more confident than me and better at it than me at that time. And so that's why I didn't get into the class. So I do understand that. But it's nice to kind of just persevere anyway, because... It just, you know, it's, it's no indication whether you're actually going to do this or not um, in those earlier years, I think. Great question. Thank you. <laughs> GalaxyCon 2023, this was Karen Gillan, and that was our time. But before